Welcome to this presentation on the clustering improvements in Windows Server 2012. My name is Aidan Finn. I'm the technical sales lead for Micro Warehouse Limited, a value-added distributor in Dublin, Ireland. I'm an MVP with a virtual machine or Hyper-V expertise, a blog on AidanFinn.com, I tweet as at Joe underscore Elway, and I've been the author or contributing author of a number of books, including Microsoft Private Cloud Computing, Mastering Hyper-V Deployment, and I'm one of a team that are currently writing Windows Server 2012 Hyper-V Installation and Configuration Guide, which will be available in the early 2013. There are a number of significant improvements to failover clustering in Windows Server 2012. We can have up to 64 nodes in a cluster using any one of Hyper-V Server 2012, Windows Server 2012 Standard, which now includes all the scalability and features of the Data Center Edition, and of course, Windows Server 2012 Data Center Edition. This is a big improvement to the maximum of 16 nodes in Windows Server 2008 or 2, which is going to simplify our deployments of a private cloud. A cluster, or a Hyper-V cluster, can support up to 4,000 virtual machines. Bearing in mind that we can have a maximum of 1,024 virtual machines on a single host, or 4 terabytes of RAM on a single host. Cluster Schedule Tasks is a new feature in failover clustering that allows us to configure a scheduled task to run on any random node in the cluster, all nodes in the cluster at the same time, or a particular node that is hosting a specified clustered role, such as a file share or a virtual machine. In the past, it's been impossible to configure automatic updating for the nodes in a cluster. This meant that patching had to be done manually, which meant that patching was prone to not happening at all, which could be a bit of an issue when we're dealing with security updates. Windows Server 2012 includes a new feature called Cluster Aware Updating, or CAU. This orchestrates the patching of cluster nodes with zero downtime for the services that are hosted by that cluster. CAU can be initiated from another machine, such as a Windows 8 PC running the Remote Server Administration Toolkit, or it can be scheduled to happen automatically using a highly available CAU role that's hosted on the cluster itself. This will move across the nodes in the cluster to continue the orchestration during the patching process. CAU orchestrates the patching of cluster nodes by first downloading the updates, then it pauses the first node in the cluster. This causes the roles that are hosted on that cluster, such as virtual machines, to live migrate to other nodes in the cluster. That first node is patched, it's rebooted, and when it starts heartbeating again in the cluster, CAU counts that machine as being up and running, and then continues with the process on node 2. Cluster Shared Volume, or CSV, is now a version 2 feature in Windows Server 2012. The setup has been greatly simplified. You just have to import your disks and convert them into cluster shared volumes. CSV now supports more than just Hyper-V. It also supports the scalable, continuously available, active-active file server cluster known as a scale-out file server for application data. Redirected I.O. has seen a number of changes too. Metadata operations, those are operations such as file creation or file open on a CSV, happen at SMB level. And that's subject to SMB multi-channel, which can greatly improve the performance of those metadata operations. The loss of a storage path between a cluster node and the SAN can introduce block-level redirected I.O. Now, this bypasses the networking stack in one of the cluster nodes, and that makes block-level redirected I.O. two times faster than a normal SMB-level uh, redirected I.O. for metadata operations. Great news for Hyper-V administrators. We now have direct I.O. when we're performing a VSS backup of virtual machines that are hosted on a cluster shared volume. Each cluster shared volume will have a single coordinated VSS snapshot thanks to a new CSV writer that coordinates the entire process across the cluster. We can now bit blocker cluster shared volumes to encrypt them. So if we're concerned about losing our physical disks in the SAN, we don't have to worry about it anymore because that data is encrypted. CSV also has support for third-party integrations through system filter drivers. 
CSV volumes are going to appear as CSV FS in disk management. This is useful because disk administrators can see that the volume is something different than a traditional NTFS file system, even though it still is actually NTFS in the file system. And third party applications can see that these volumes are also something special as well. So they can treat CSV volumes as CSVs rather than as normal ones. CSV block cache is a new feature that improves the read performance of selected cluster shared volumes. It's configured on a per cluster basis to dedicate a small amount of memory of each node in the cluster to act as a read cache for selected CSVs. We then turn it on on a per CSV basis, selecting those CSVs that are very read intensive. Just a small amount of memory can make a drastic improvement to the read performance of our CSVs. Microsoft reckons that 512 megs of RAM is actually the sweet spot and can greatly reduce the amount of time it takes for the boot storm in a virtual desktop infrastructure. There are a number of improvements in failover clustering for Hyper-V. Virtual machine failover prioritization allows us to order the failover of virtual machines whenever a node fails in the cluster. Virtual machine could have no failover priority, which means it won't fail over. That might be appropriate for lab machines or test machines. It could have a high failover priority, which means it would fail over before other virtual machines. By default, all virtual machines would have a medium failover priority, which means they fail over after high priority virtual machines. And the final bucket is low failover priority. And those virtual machines wait for the high and the medium priority virtual machines to start before they start. Windows Server 2012 Hyper-V allows us to perform, in theory, an unlimited number of simultaneous live migrations. But in reality, that's limited by our networking and our hardware. Windows Server failover clustering has to be able to deal with this large number of simultaneous live migrations. And it is. We can, in fact, live migrate all the virtual machines on a clustered node at the same time. The number that are allowed to live migrate simultaneously will start, while all the others will queue up and wait their turn. Affinity and anti-affinity VM rules allow us to configure rules to keep virtual machines either on the same node, for example, if they're on a private virtual switch, or on different nodes, for example, if they're in a guest cluster. Virtual machine monitoring is where we can configure the failover cluster to detect certain things happening inside the guest operating system of a highly available virtual machine. It can detect services failing, or it can detect certain things happening in the Windows event logs. Failover clustering can then restart the virtual machine, or fail over and restart the virtual machine, depending on the situation. We aren't limited to just using SAS, iSCSI and Fiber Channel storage in a Windows Server 2012 failover cluster. We can also store our virtual machines on Windows Server 2012 file shares. People who have implemented Windows Server 2008 or Windows Server 2008 or 2 Hyper-V clusters are familiar with the need to maintain a physical domain controller to avoid a chicken and egg scenario where the Hyper-V cluster would start up and wouldn't be able to authenticate until a virtual domain controller that was hosted on the cluster had also started up. Windows Server 2012 allows us to eliminate that need for extra additional hardware for physical domain controllers with a new feature called bootstrapping. The Hyper-V cluster nodes are able to authenticate before the virtual domain controllers have started up. There's also good news for branch office administrators because the Hyper-V cluster also supports the usage of read-only domain controllers. If you want to learn more about failover clustering in Windows Server 2012, I recommend reading the articles on the Failover Clustering and Network Load Balancing Team blog on MSDN. You can also read more about Windows Server 2012 Hyper-V and failover clustering on my blog on aidenfin.com and on Twitter at Joe underscore Elway. Thank you very much for listening to this presentation and good luck with your deployment of Windows Server 2012.